All right. Let, as a very first talk in the staging session, um, please allow me to spend some time on introducing multi-state programming. Suppose we have a generic program doing matrix multiplication, and uh, we have some information on the input, such as first we know the matrix size, and then the first matrix, and then the second matrix. We could do binding time analysis, and then we get a multi-stage program, for example, a three-stage matrix multiplication program. Now let's evaluate this three-stage multiplication program on some partially known input. And we get a specialized program, which is two-staged. And then we know the first matrix. We get a one-stage program. Now we could execute a program on the runtime input. And uh, we get a matrix multiplication result. So our paper studies a functional programming language, which is called MetaMail. It was developed and studied by Tim Shirt and Vali Taha in the late 90s. It helps programmers leverage partial evaluation and uh, program specialization techniques to optimize the time and space consumption of evaluating programs. However, the potential of multi-state programming paradigm has been impeded um, by the lack of development aids, such as uh, um, refactoring tools, for which we believe the culprit is a lack of static analysis support. So our long-term goal is to design, and design sound and decidable static analysis for multi-state programming language, such as MetaML. So in order to achieve our goal, as we have learned uh, from the keynote speaker, we could build up our work on the shoulders of the giants. So we have found two giants, um, David Van Horn and uh, Matthew Might. In their work, they propose a general purpose framework to systematically develop static analysis for programming language by transforming its sem formal semantics. And we believe this framework is applicable to our um, to multi-stage programming. So in order to use that framework, we need to develop an environmental abstract machine semantics that involves a control string, an environment, and a continuation as a program evaluates. So this is a CEK machine. So what we want to develop in this paper is an MCEK machine, where M stands for multi-stage. So this is a roadmap of our development. Now let's get familiar with MetaML. So in MetaML, we use staging annotations to turn a conventional program into a multi-stage program. We have three staging annotations. The first one is called brackets, which are for delaying computation. For example, we put this addition inside of brackets it is a piece of code and doesn't evaluate. The second one is called splice, which is for combining delayed computations. For example, we could combine these two delayed uh, additions. The third one is called run, which is for executing a delayed computation. For example, we had this uh, delayed addition before. If we execute it, we get its uh, computation result. And uh, to regulate where splice and run could happen, we introduce the concept of levels. It is a number of surrounding brackets minus a number of surrounding splices. We also use levels to finally distinguish subclasses of terms and values. OK, now let's walk through a classic staging example. So here's a generic power function. Um, for clarity, we use a Haskell style here. And uh, to, to frequently compute 100th power, we could either specialize a generic program or write a special program. So using the example of computing 2 to the power of 100, we compare the performance of these two programs. 
So for the first one, the developer is happy because he doesn't, he or she doesn't need to write too much code. For the user is not happy because it has a high runtime overhead. It has 100 recursive calls to the generic power function. For the special program, the developer is not happy because he says he has to do some repeated work. And the user is happy because it has a lower runtime overhead. So neither of the two functions are good in both aspects. So we want to write less code and achieve better runtime performance. So if we can somehow rewrite the body of the lambda abstraction in this way, we could achieve our goal. So can we evaluate a function fully and evaluate a function with partially known input? Well, with the help of multi system programming, we could do both. So now we have the generic power function and we specialize it to compute on the nth power of the input. Now we add the staging annotations. Suppose we want to frequently compute the 100th power, we could do something like this and we get a, a special function that we want. So that was an introduction to MetaML. Here shows a roadmap of our project. We start with uh, MetaML, which was developed um, by Pat Highland Shirt in the 2000s. And our goal is to develop an MC EK machine for MetaML. And uh, refining substitutional semantics to environmental semantics is not straightforward. So we'd like to take a detour to solve this problem. So in order to bridge the gap between the two semantics, so we leverage the concept of explicit substitutions. And we derive this um, explicit metamel. To more closely resemble the behavior of environmental semantics, um, we refine how to represent functions and applications, and we de derive this suspended metamel. And finally, um, because metamel allows the variable bound to an open term, which causes modeling variable bindings very complicated. So we devise meta environments to model variable bindings. And we have this environmental metamel. So we build its SOS, reduction semantics, and finally, an abstract machine, which is called the MCEK machine. And we also have uh, um, correctness discussions and equivalence proofs. So, at the starting point of refining semantics, which reference semantics should we use for MetaML? Well, in that paper, um, we used uh, substitutional big step semantics. So our goal is to develop an MCEP machine, which is an environmental small step semantics. So it is, seems a natural step to start with some small step semantics. Hence, we derive this substitutional SOS based on the big step semantics. And we use it as our reference semantics. So regarding our reference semantics, it performs substitutions implicitly in the meta language. So this is an application rule, which is quite uh, usual. And the highlighted part shows the result of performing such, an, such a substitution. So it doesn't take any additional step. So our goal is to develop an environmental abstract machine, which should correctly manage variable names without appealing to alpha equivalents. So we make the same design choice here. So what we are heading to is an MCEK machine, which is an environmental semantics, which keeps tracks of variable bindings and replaces variable references on demand. And what we currently have is a substitutional semantics. So in order to bridge the gap between these two kinds of semantics, we introduce explicit metamel. So explicit metamel performs substitutions 
in the object language. And it internalizes explicit substitutions. And an, an explicit substitution takes step to percolate through the term. Now we have explicit metamail to, to imitate the behavior of environmental semantics. We, we reconsider two questions, how to model functions and how to model uh, applications. We derive suspended metamail. So previously, in explicit metamail, um, functions are modeled as uh, um, lambda abstractions. In a conventional environmental semantics, functions are modeled as closures like this. So here in suspended metamail, um, we suspend explicit substitutions outside of uh, level zero lambda abstractions. So here's how we model functions. We also reconsider how to model applications. This is what we did in explicit metamail. And in a conventional environmental semantics, performing an application is like updating the environment. Here in suspended metamail, we promote the substitution from the found variable to the overriding any existing substitution for that variable. So here some xi may be, may be equal to x. This is just imitating, updating the environment. Now we have suspended metamail. So we can finally derive environmental metamail. So for environmental metamail, we have its SOS reduction semantics and then abstract machine, which is a CQ machine. Let's talk about uh, environmental metamail first. So here shows how a function truly represents in suspended metamail. It makes a top level structure not immediately recognized. So we have died down through all the explicit substitutions um, to search for a level zero lambda abstraction. It seems a natural approach to just replace the functions in suspended metamail with a closure value and replace a term uh, surrounded by explicit substitutions with a closure. But it doesn't work. Let's consider an example from uh, suspended metamail. So this uh, newly highlighted part is of a concern particularly. So for this, um, the variable y is bound to u, which is later bound to 5. Suppose we convert it to a closure like this. And to evaluate it, we look up the environment, y is bound to u, and it steps to u, which is a free variable. It is certainly not what we want. So the variable bindings in metamail is complicated, as we said before, um, because we allow a variable bound to an open term. So a variable could be bound to a chain of um, variable bindings. So here we devise a meta environment, which is a finite sequence of environments, among which the free variables of one environment are bound by the next environment. Now, inside the closures, we have this uh, meta environment instead of uh, environments. And for this example, um, y is paired with a meta environment. To evaluate, we first look up the first environment, and we get u paired with the second environment. And later, we look up the second environment, and we get a final result. So for environmental um, metamail, we derive its SOS a reduction semantics and finally the MCEQ machine. Let's talk about the MCEQ machine. This machine operates in four modes. For the reduced mode, it uses a control stream. 
which is a Redex. For the focus mode, it searches downward into the context for Redex. For the build mode, it returns the control string, which is a value back to the evaluation context. For the value mode, it is just a result of uh, doing computation, of, com of executing the machine. Now we have uh, built our MCEQ machine. Let me brief talk about um, its correctness, the correctness of our development. So recall in suspended MetaMail, we have this application rule. We promote execution for the lambda bound variable to the front. Well, it seems correct, more correct, to do something like this. We first rename the lambda bound variable to a fresh variable, and then we perform the substitution in the end. So can we somehow combine these two substitutions? It turns out that in order to do this, we need to prove some properties like this. And in the paper, we introduce well boundness judgment to show that this property always holds when we call the application rule. All right. Um, and, and in the keynote, Danny shared some personal stories of him. And here, we want to say that uh, you can eat an elephant one byte at a time. So we cannot derive MCQ machine directly, but we could uh, take a detour to derive it. So we systematically um, refine our reference semantics to explicit MetaMail, suspended MetaMail, and finally environmental MetaMail. And we plan to use a framework proposed by uh, David Van Horn and Matthew Might to do static analysis for MetaMail. And we would like to thank all these people who contributed to my presentation or the paper. And thank you all for your attention. Thank you.